My climate change research is with uh, smallholder farmers in Ghana. And these farmers are affected by climate change. And we also want to encourage them to um, mitigate climate change in their agricultural practices. Um, for my research, I'm actually very much directly involved because uh, I go out there and I spend time with the farmers in order to really understand their challenges so that we co-design the research. And I'm also involved throughout the implementation of the research because together we select certain climate change adaptation and mitigation measures and technologies. And throughout the research, we actually evaluate what works best in their context. And then based on these evaluations, we can also inform policy makers and program makers in the development sector for the use of these technologies. So yeah, it's a very diverse set of skills that I, that I have to use for my research, but that's also what I like about it. I like being there with them and actually getting my hands dirty, trying to understand the challenges that they face, um, which can be a lot of things. I mean, there's changes in precipitation patterns, there is an increased uh, amount of droughts that they're facing. But um, yeah, these type of circumstances also um, lead to the fact that my research cannot be set in stone. We need to adapt, we need to improve on the fly. But we are also really um, tailoring our research to the issues that these farmers face. So by this type of research, we can have an impact on the lives of the people there while conducting the research. My um, research is about many things, as a matter of fact. Um, first of all, we started uh, working large data sets, uh, figuring out what is the average gas mileage someone has on their car, what's the average amount of insulation people have in their house, uh, what's the average amount of um, uh, food waste that a typical family is producing. And based on that data, we created an evidence-based app. So this app actually allows users to calculate their carbon footprint. You've heard the term before, but there was no means of actually calculating this. And now there is with our app. So um, the app not only gives insight into uh, how good or bad you're doing, but also gives tips on how to improve your own sustainability. Um, and, and, and personally, I'm very excited to be working on uh, something that can actively trigger people to make a change. And this is also being picked up on by um, uh, the so-called Universities Incubator, which is a program that allows us to pitch to investors, other influential people. And who knows, our uh, little small university project might just turn into a big university spin-off. I want to understand what's exactly going on considering climate change. So the temperature rise we've seen over the past years, is that really different from the fluctuations in temperature we've seen over the past millennia? I take uh, ice samples from the South Pole and I look at the chemical composition of that and that tells me exactly when this water froze. And I can use that to kind of look back in time to see um, the global temperature changes over time. In relation to climate change, what I'm interested about is how we as humans make sense of that topic of climate change. Um, so I, I'm going to look at uh, medias and how they convey the information and how this changes the tone and the content of the debate. Um, in the last few years, fortunately, the, the tone of voice has changed and we are finally conveying a little more urgency to the general public. So that is, a, that is a good thing, but it's interesting to see how media have been changing their tone of voice over the course of time and how does that impact our view on it. Also how different media are conveying different information and different tone on that. Um, if we look at populist channels and more high quality traditional media, the message is definitely different and that is very interesting to observe.